Thanks for joining me on a fresh edition of Law and You, where we look at issues concerning uh, concepts that needs to have some light in terms of the legality that is behind these concepts or the implications of it. My name is Philip Omo Gupo, and today we'll be looking at party candidates and, as a declaration, the legal implication. And joining me to discuss this is Emmanuel Obakbolo, a legal practitioner. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. Good day, viewers at home. Okay, we take a short break. Do stay. Thank you for joining me. Uh, let's look at the um, law and what your assessment is concerning the practice of asset declaration by politicians. And is it obligatory by law? Yes, it is obligatory, and it is not just a, a mere practice by the politicians. The 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria vests that power and also provides for such. And also the Electoral Act 2022 encapsulates the, the practice and the, a pro, the provision for asset declaration. And also, uh, the asset declaration is not just a practice by politicians alone. Also inclusive is the political, various political parties. Sections 85 to 90 of the Electoral Act provides for asset declaration by both political parties and their candidates. And so much so, it also provides for statements of accounts and taking of inventory of the properties of the various political parties and to submit same to the commission. The commission here is the Independent National Electoral Commission. And in section 225 to 228 of the 1999 constitution also provides for asset declaration. So much so, what the law simply is, is that you marry the provisions of the Constitution 285, 225 rather, to 228, and sections 85 to 90 of the Electoral Arts. Okay. Specifically, in section 86 of the Electoral Arts, it provides that politi the political parties must take inventory of its properties or their properties, as the case may be, and also statements of account, the rendering of statement of account to the commission. By so doing, is another form of asset declaration. So now, where a person or persons or any political party violates of that provisions of the law, the law France at that, and in section two, in section eighty six. And 87 of the constitution, penalties will be visited on that political party or parties or, candidates. or candidate or candidates, as the case may be. If you say that as it is, it means that it has a legal requirement. Yes. And for which, if there is any flouting of these rules or law, that means that uh, the party in question uh, will stand trial in the law court. Mm -hmm. But in, the, in practice, We've had issues where politicians fail to declare assets and no, nothing happens. Yes. The lacuna there in the laws, just now, to my mind, is that the, there is no perfect instrument with which sanctions, punishments can be visited on any political party or parties or person, candidates or candidates that frowns at these provisions of the law. Okay, so are you by that saying that there is no defined penalties? There is defined law? penalty, like section 86. Okay. Says any political party or person who do, does that, who violates, we pay the sum of one million naira or six months imprisonment or both. Okay, so what do you mean by uh, the two? Now, the commission itself does not have the capacity oh. to prosecute. 
The commission or to enforce to prosecute. Okay. The commission will still depend on the Nigeria police to do the prosecution. Or the commission will depend on the anti graft agencies, for instance, the EFCC, ICPC, can they be drafted in? Don't they have powers to regulate and enforce? The law does not provide for them. Oh. That's why I say the instrument which wish to carry, carry out function. the functions, the, to, to do the needful mm. with regards to the sanctioning, to regulate. is not there. All is you vested mean, on the commission. You mean the law is silent in that regard? It's silent. All is vested on the commission. So that could give room for uh, laxity that we are seeing at present. Yes. I also saw a situation where a candidate for an election never paid tax until a few months to the election. Hurriedly paid tax and it was backdated. Hmm. Why did that happen? This, are the, this is the lacuna. So, in a situation where, how many, for instance, how many political parties declare their assets to the commission? Mm. How many today? Where you have, mind you, the, the, today we are made to understand that the leaders of the various political parties in the state are the state governors. Atredra is the president. Now, if you want to sanction, you want to punish, you will not say, oh, let me go and punish the chairman of the political party. The chairman will tell you, I'm not the leader of the party. The governor is the leader of the party in the state. Though we, have, we are mere executives. So, would you now, would the law now punish the governor of a state that has immunity? These are the lacunas. So, that is why the law that creates for the declaration of assets also, that also creates for the sanction did not envisage some of this lacuna. Okay. Okay. To put the perspectives rightly and to see the benefits of uh, asset declaration, what do you see as a function of asset declaration that could be beneficial to, uh, the, uh, to bringing about electoral integrity or to checking against any ills? that uh, may, you know, occur uh, in, in the area of uh, public officers occupying their office and also um, checking against any lapses that may occur in public offices. What do you see as a function of asset declaration in doing this? Well, asset declaration, as provided for by the law, is a good thing. Okay. And I think, to my mind, that... Any person who is canvassing or who has canvassed or who is to hold or who is holding any political office should declare his assets or her assets. But now, the persons who are to carry out this function of the law are civil servants. And the today Nigeria that you and I know, most of the hills most of the failure we have witnessed or experienced are from the civil servants. Okay. Okay, but does this function check against uh, corruption uh, incidences? It doesn't. Because As in the aspect of asset declaration, does it check against uh, corruption incidents? It ought to, mm. but it doesn't, as it oh. stands just now in Nigeria. It doesn't. Because one, we already see a lacuna where... There is no proper agency. No tool, yes. Yes, to carry out the regulations. The regulations, the sanctions. We now see the commission. And the commission does not have this might to so do. Like I asked from the asset of this program. Who? How many political parties rather submit their statements of account to the commission? We have not witnessed a situation where the commission itself made publication of the assets of the various political parties in Nigeria. We have not witnessed that. So, in a situation where the commission does not have records, the commission have not, has not taken inventory of the assets of the various political parties, 
What? How will the same commission now sanction those okay. who are violated? I think this is an embarrassment because even in Ukraine, for instance, as a country in Ukraine, mm. civil servants are made to declare their assets, and it comes with penalties if they fail to do that. Now, does it not show, or what does it uh, tend to present to uh, the Nigerian government or the populace if we are not having this aspect of uh, asset declaration taken as an important uh, function to check against uh, corruption cases? Like, for instance, some will ask, does the political will of the leaders at present, does it show that they are into that direction to make sure that uh, they fix this to make it uh, a law that will address all of this lacuna that you're talking about. How do you see the political will of the present leaders? I don't think the present leaders have any political will. Because if you look at the present day Nigeria, and you look at the laws that regulate all of this, particularly asset declaration, already there are lacuna in the law and loss, as the case may be, already. So, these quotes, and unquote, smart politicians, take advantage of all of these flowers. Okay. And the civil servants are the ones who will aid them to take advantage of all of these. So, there's so, a mischief. There's a mischief yeah, in indeed. avoiding this. Indeed. That's why the laws are made just, to my mind, just to, for it to be there. One. Two. To probably satisfy the yearnings of Nigeria. This administration told us, before they came on board, before they emerged, that the primary duty they are going to carry out is to fight corruption. And one of the ways to fight corruption is asset declaration. Of course, and making sure that it, it works. There, yes. There's a body, body or bodies the, or agencies the German, that will regulate the enforcement. The German question now. Does it work so? The answer is an emphatic no. So, until all of these are put in place, it's a mere exercise. Okay. At present, we have the Social Economic Rights Accountability Project, SERAP, that is really on the throats of the three major uh, party presidential candidates, you know, in Nigeria, ahead of the 2023 presidential race. And also, civil society organizations are equally on the throats of these major uh, candidates. Now, do you, see, do you see an opportunity of litigation if this fails to happen, that uh, SERAP or other bodies could institute you know, in the law court against such uh, presidential candidates that failed to declare their assets even before uh, the election? Well... There is a possibility that litigations, can that litigations will come. But another question is, where any of the candidates succeeds, can that, and the court, can the court not give judgment against that candidate? Okay, but can there be litigations when there is no defined uh, body that could regulate or That's prosecute? why, that's why the exercise of Sarah and other no exercise in futility. Because, one, these organizations are not government agencies. They, they are not institutionalized. The government of the day, we paint a picture that it is because one or two of their candidates or those they have in mind did not succeed. That's why there is this propaganda. They call it political propaganda. So, until the institutions are bigger than the individuals, mm. we will go nowhere. The, main, the major problem in Nigeria is that we have a lot of institutions, but the institutions have not been institutionalized. Okay. Well, how they, are mere, they are mere pets. To the government. Okay, how do we start the journey to defining this properly, to making sure that the law is formidable and it serves its function? Uh, where does it start from? Does it start from uh, promoting bills in the National Assembly? Or where does it start from? The laws are already there. I think 
The first no, he, he, he given definition to bodies that could regulate in order to make it uh, definite. We already have bodies like EFCC. Okay. ICPC. Ordinarily, these bodies are they, empowered. They, they are. They are. And who controls these bodies? That is another question. Who does the appointment of the head of these bodies? That is another question. It is the government in power that does the appointment. So, he who appoints can also fire. Until the executive removes their hands from it. Okay, you're just giving us uh, an, another uh, approach to this. Mm. What you're saying now is that there are bodies that are empowered by law mm. to regulate the, this aspect, to make sure that the function of asset declaration comes to limelight. Yes. But that uh, your fear is that it's being politicized. Okay, so this, this is a different perspective entirely. Th th then how should it be done in terms of checkmating the executive from politicizing this? One is for the executive not to do the appointment of the heads of these bodies. One. If possible, it can be by election. If possible, not delegate election because the delegates will take money. They will take dollars. They will take pounds. So we will still go back to where we are coming from. Two, it should be by the legislature. The National Assembly is there. And they are all representing our interests. They can, by their own way... They are all representing our interests or they seem to. They, for the now... Or they are made to represent our interests. The law sees them to be representing our interests. Okay. But we know the other way, they are not, they are, they are not representing our interests. Well, we can't say that entirely. They are there for their interests. I can say it, and I have my evidence, or evidences as the case may be. You can't say of, you can't make a general, or I am, I am making that. a general because we, we have not seen any of them who is distinct. Because at the end of the day, even those we think that should come out distinctly, are hiding under the shadow of others. Oh, I will not talk. So that they will not finger me as the black sheep of this train. Okay, if, if, if the leaders or those in question that uh, seem to be representing us, you know, fail to do this, and uh, the executive also, you know, seem to uh, fail to do this, then where lies the hope of the common man on having a rebirth of a process that will help to um, make this law more decisive or to make these bodies responsible for the enforcement of these laws more uh, decisive. Where is the hope of the common man? That is why we find ourselves in a state of despair. In a situation where the leadership rules with impunity and at the end of the day, the same leadership will address the nation, the people, with so much arrogance, with that being apologetic, what do you have? But is that not where the judiciary comes in as the hope uh, uh, of the common man? Judiciary. For the last instance, hope at that. So they say, and it ought to be so, but just now it is not so. Take for instance, Sarah that we are talking about. Sarah have taken so many government to court. Okay. What has been the result? Even when the court gives judgment against the executive, the enforcement is another problem. We've seen it happen. We have a plethora of judgments against this present regime. Against them. But the enforcement is another problem because one, cause judgment can only be enforced by the court itself. Oh. And the court, in enforcing its judgment, use the police, who is an ambit of the executive. Who appoints the Inspector General of Police? It's executive. So, until we sit down, admit to the fact that we are not telling ourselves the truth, then I say, what do we do from here? Until then, we will remain the way we are. Mind you, remember, brother, when this government, they told us a lot of, a lot of stories. We pointed, they pointed finger 
at the previous administration. But today, they are now using that as a defense. Instead of telling, doing the needful, so that the nation can move forward, the, rather, the nation is going backward. Well, uh, we, today, we, we can't say the nation is going backward. The nation uh, so, is going backward. So because, because that's your opinion. It is that's my opinion. opinion. Yes, because it is my opinion. Let's, let's look at the way of getting things done rightly. Mm. Now, uh, campaigns uh, for the presidential race you know, have, been, uh, have started in earnest uh, because uh, according to the uh, electoral laws, it is to start at September 28th, which was uh, Wednesday last week. And uh, it's expected that this whole aspect of uh, too much money in politics should be checked. And uh, that, again, uh, could have been checked using asset declaration, you know, but uh, we seem to have a challenge or a, a porous uh, problem in that regard. Now, what's your advice to the electorate on how to uh, see through party candidates in knowing which to cast their vote on? Well... Since 1999, we've had a porous system where poverty is weaponized. And it is deliberate by the leaders because they want to use poverty as a tool to checkmate the electorate, the people. And that is why today, even when you tell the people that, look, let's vote for individuals. Let, not look, let, let us not look at political parties any longer. Some will still find it difficult. Mm. Because the old grandma there who goes to vote and 5,000 naira is flashed on her face. Say, take this 5,000 naira, vote party X, Y, Z. The possibility of she taking the 5,000 naira and cast a vote for party XYZ is higher than she refusing the money. Okay. Okay. So, poverty has been weaponized. So, even the people just now are confused. And government agencies that ought to do the campaign against uh, vote buying and this others. Menace. They are silent. That so, the National Orientation Agency. They are okay. silent. Okay, so you mean to say we uh, we are in a dilemma? We are. <laughs> Big we thanks are. for taking our time to be part of this, uh, Emmanuel Obakbolo, and uh, we hope to uh, see you more on uh, Law and You. Well, this is much you can take on today's edition of Law and You. My name is Philip Omo Gupon. We we'll see you on the next one.